Hello everybody. That's just there we go. I hope you're having a great week. I just want to leave you with a little food for thought, things to think about. We have to be prepared in these last days to handle what's coming. The problem is we don't know the timing or what is coming. We just know that it's not going to be good for the world. As Christians, we should be okay. You can hear fish jumping behind me if you hear a splash every once in a while, like I just did. Like that. We don't know what's coming and when, so we've got to be ready with a, somewhat of a plan. The plan may have to be generic. You can't come up with every possible scenario. endless possibilities and only God would have a chance of helping you in doing that but you can do the basics okay you, know, you should have plenty of extra food and water for things to shut down I've talked about that prepping don't build a bomb shelter but you need to have food and water the essentials to live on you need to have you know clothing that will handle the environment we're heading into summer now, so you maybe won't have to have, you know, winter jackets. But if it were winter time, you'd need to have a winter jacket because you won't survive in the weather. You need to have a meet-up place. What's going to happen if everybody's off doing their own thing and everything shuts down? Where are you going to go? What if you're? What if you take a train to work? A lot of people do. They travel into the city on a train. What if the trains are shut down for whatever reason? They can be hacked. They can have a fire. Those all kinds of things can happen. What are you gonna, what's your backup plan in case that maybe you know another worker that drives to the same general area you do? Maybe you can hitch a ride. But have that worked out in advance. You won't have time when things go bad to do that. But common sense is just as much a part of survival as anything. Now, we don't have to survive the tribulation, so I'm not telling you to do that. Those that think that there's only one rapture and it's at the very end are very much mistaken. We have multiple raptures. We just don't know when the first one is. And since we're being snatched away, it's not going to be pleasant. So you've got to be able to survive long enough for that. If you die because you didn't prepare right and you're a Christian, you're still going to get to heaven. But why go to all that trouble? And it's just a little common sense. And I'm afraid that that's not a popular thing nowadays. Just talk to any of the newest generations out there. Common sense is not common. <clears throat> but think your plans through. I'm going to give you some real quick, simple, obvious things to get you to think about others. What happens if you buy 100 cases of soup or whatever you could possibly buy that you might want to eat? And I'm exaggerating on the numbers just to kind of make a point. But you got all this soup stored away could be raviolis, could be anything, whatever you want to do. You have an electric can opener. You're in good shape, right? What happens if the power goes out? Do you have a backup? Do you have a manual can opener? I would suggest getting a real one that you can crank. You know, forget the John Wayne ones. I've taken those camping and they're kind of a pain to to use, especially if you got to use them all the time. Just get yourself a nice good can opener, 
use it a couple times to make sure it works because some of these things are manufactured so cheaply that you can open like two cans and then they break. So I would actually test thoroughly everything that you try to put in your plan. Okay, let's say you have a, a gun for hunting. When was the last time you fired that gun? Is it clean? Did you clean it? Maybe it's rusting because it's sitting someplace because you don't like guns and you've got it someplace where it's rusting. Do you have enough ammunition? Is it the right kind? Take some of that ammunition and go find a hunting or shooting range and practice shooting that. If you're going to shoot for food, you don't want to be shooting and just hitting the dirt. You need to be killing something. What happens if you kill a deer, for instance? Do you know how to clean it? See, if your answer to any of these is no, then you're not prepared in that area. You know, how about you've got a special place, a cabin in the woods that you know about that you're going to go to as soon as the grid goes down. You've got it programmed into your GPS as a hot button. You just push the button and you're off. What happens if they take the internet and or the satellites down? We're talking about potential World War type stuff here. We're just plain catastrophic things. The sun is finishing up its hot season. You could have one last blast to knock out communication. EMP bombs can do the same thing without destroying people. You've got to have a plan. So you, if you know where it's at because you've driven there a million times, then you're probably okay. But what about everybody else? If, if they're all coming from different directions, how are you going to meet up at some place if they don't know how to get there? Draw them a map. Make sure you have a paper copy. I had the problem a while back, I've told you about it, where I dropped my phone. Broke the screen. It was still working. I could see stuff happening on the screen, but I couldn't tell what it was. I had to figure out how from a camping place that I didn't normally go to drive to the nearest phone store and get a new phone. Now, I was able to basically get where I needed to go because I knew the general area. But what if you're in an area that you don't know and it may or may not be a good idea to stop and talk to people because you don't know who you're going to run into in a crisis situation. These may be city slickers that have come out to steal from everybody because they don't have anything. So you got to be careful. So not only do you have to have the things that you need to survive, but you know, need to know how to use them and use them properly and efficiently. And the only way to do that is to practice. Say, well, I've got a bow and arrow in the garage someplace. Some place is not good. You have to know where it's at. So you can go grab it when you need to. And you need to know how to shoot it. And you better have more than one arrow because it can get lost. You can shoot it and you may not be able to find it. Do you know how to make an arrow? Nobody can make an arrow as good as the manufactured ones can. The fiberglass or the composite arrows. They shoot straight. You get something else that's not going to shoot straight. It affects your range. So instead of being 50 yards from something, you may have to be 10 yards. That's harder to do. And have you ever tried that? You can't make any noise at all. And then how do you, how do you cook it? Do you know how to make a fire? I'm an ex-scoutmaster. I used to teach the Boy Scouts how to build fires. There's a art to it. I was camped at another campsite a few months back. Some lady shows up and 
and she scrounges up some wood and tries to build a fire. I said, do you need any help? She goes, no, I've got it. I went to bed because it was late building an evening fire. The next morning she was gone and there was a whole box of spent matches on the ground. She had used up all of her matches trying to light this fire because she built it wrong. She was trying to light large pieces of wood. You have to start small. You have to have enough wood there already gathered to keep the fire going so that you don't have to leave the fire and go get it. Go out while you're doing that. More fishermen in here. There are a lot of fish out there, but I don't know. I don't know what you have to use for bait. There's a place just on the road in here that you can stop and get worms. Will this work? Do you use spinners? I don't know. This is downstream from Atlanta, so I don't know that I would eat the fish. There are people here that probably can't afford to do anything and they would eat it. But that's the thing. Do you know how to if you catch a fish? Do you have fishing gear? Do you know how to bait a hook? There was a guy next to me here with his wife. He had two boys. I think they were separated. So they were getting back together as a little family. That was good to see. They got a couple of fishing poles for the boys. He didn't know how to put a worm on a hook. She grabbed it to him, she grabbed it from him and said, here, I'll do that. And she just grabbed a worm and stuck it on the hook like you're supposed to. So you see, it's not always as easy as it would appear and you won't think of everything. So have a backup plan. Do you have a, I call it a grab and go bag, but a bug out bag or whatever you want to call it. Do you have one of those? If you have to go now, you don't have time. Like the Bible says, if you're on the roof, don't go back down inside the house and grab your jacket, flee. Don't go back to get anything, just flee. The Bible talks about that. And I was talking to the Jews but it says when this event happens, you don't have time. You might have time to grab one bag as you're leaving. It should have food, maybe a bottle of water, a knife, some essentials that you might need. It doesn't have to have a lot. You've got to have something. You don't carry, I don't carry in my pockets, survival stuff. I, I stopped carrying knives because I got to where I was going to public places that they didn't want you to have a knife. You can't go on a plane with a knife. Uh, I'm going to sneeze again if this doesn't stop. Oh, the pollen. We have the month of April to get through. I, I know I could take medicine for it, but I don't like doing that. The only medicine that really works puts me to sleep, and I don't want to do that. The other medicine has other side effects, but you know, it's the body doesn't like it. You can't fool the body; it knows what it's doing. So taking pills, you know, sleeping through it is not the way to do it. But if you've got medications, that's another thing to think about. If you have to take a heart pill. Do you have enough to last you for a couple months? Okay, maybe they're expensive and you only buy them two weeks at a time. I would try to come up with enough money to at least have a month's worth. Because if things shut down, the doctors are not going to be able to get you your pills. What do you, what's, the, what's your backup plan? Okay, you have one bottle, there's 30 pills in it, that's for a month. I'm not giving any medical advice. This is something you should ask your doctor. Can you break the pills in half and take half a dose for two months? In an emergency situation, something to ask your doctor. You know, things that you need to do to survive. 
You've got to think these things through. I don't need glasses to see distance, but I need reading glasses. What would I do if I lost my reading glasses? Well, one trick would be to use your phone if it's still working. And you can take a picture of something and then blow it up, or you can just put the camera at it and zoom in on it and blow it up so you can read that. I've done that sometimes, like on the back of my computer, there's a little tag that has a serial number on it, and it's so hard to read. And it's hard to get back to because it's a tall case. I don't have it here, it's in storage. But when I used it, I would zoom in on it with it on the ground and take a picture of it and then come up and look at it. Then I had a serial number to call in. You just got to, you know, use the biggest thing that God gave you besides Jesus, of course, physically that we have. This body is his design. The sinful nature of it is not. And we will be able to, to do a body swap here soon. We can exchange one for the other. All right. I hope this has given you some food for thought, things to think about. You have a to-do list. And if your page is blank, right on there, create to-do list. See you in the clouds. God bless.